This is the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and this is episode 60. Biggity, biggity, bye. What's up and welcome back everyone to another episode of the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. Today's show is all about crowdfunding and how it can solve your cash flow pinch. My guest today is Sean DeClerc. He is the CEO of KickFurther.com. Now don't be confused, this is not Kickstarter, but Kick Further. And we'll go into all the differences between Kickstarter and Kick Further. But the Cliff Notes version is Kick Further was designed so that cash flowing established businesses can shorten the time frame it takes and the difficulties and expenses involved with the traditional model of inventory finance. I personally don't have a lot of experience in this, so I learned a lot about supply chain management and just why it's so inefficient currently to go the traditional route to finance your inventory for your company. Now, we talk about investment opportunities for individuals, crowdsourcing opportunities, and please don't take this episode as an endorsement to invest into Kick Further or any of the businesses on Kick Further. But I will say that it's a really neat idea, and with the stock markets at all time highs and all the currency fluctuations we're seeing and gold pulling back, this could be a good alternative for you if it fits your risk profile. So check it out. Let me know what you think about this crowdfunding platform and if you think that it could help you become a more successful and efficient entrepreneur. Also, this episode is sponsored by Exodus.io. They're a multi-currency crypto wallet and they're looking for a JavaScript developer to join their team for a work from home position. So if this sounds like you and you've got JavaScript experience or know someone who has, then send them an email over at founders at exodus.io and let them know that Ash from Liberty Entrepreneurs sent you. Lastly, our private Facebook group, the Liberty Entrepreneurs Tribe, has been growing the past couple weeks. And if you are a digital entrepreneur, you're a Liberty Entrepreneur, and you would like to have access to this private Facebook community, then send me an email at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com, a message on Facebook, or tweet at me, Liberty E Podcast, and we'll see if we can get you added. I prefer to have people who are already working on an entrepreneurial project or who are really curious and about to start one. So without further ado, let's get into the show. So I'm really excited to have on the show today, Sean DeClerc. He is the founder and CEO of kickfurther.com. It's the world's first industry funding marketplace. Did I say that right? Tell us a little bit about yourself and give a bit better definition or description of Kick Further for us. Hey, Ash, glad to be here. So Kick Further is the first inventory, so for physical products funding marketplace. Um, what we do on Kick Further is most of the companies that we work with, they have products they need to sell. And the problem that a lot of these companies face is that they have to pay for their products, they have to pay their factory, and then it takes 30 days production, 30 days shipping, and then they can only start selling their products then um, and start collecting revenue for it. So it's that cash flow pinch that we're really solving on Kick Further, where we have a community of buyers that will buy the inventory on behalf of these companies and we'll have it shipped to the companies. They'll get the inventory they need to sell. And when it sells, they'll pay our community back. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Sean, tell us just a little bit about who you are, what your background is, and what you're passionate about. Yeah. my uh, So my name is Sean DeClerc. <laughs> uh, my background, I went to uh, school at Rutgers. I studied philosophy there. And I would say, you know, more important than that, I've, my family's been in the supply chain for over 35 years. So, and I worked in the family business. I've worked in supply chain for a long time. And, you know, what I'm really passionate about, uh, especially the reason I'm so passionate about Kick Further is I think that this is something that we're solving a major, major problem that a lot of entrepreneurs face. And we're doing it in such a way that it's like really innovative and we're creating new opportunities for, um, 
you know, a lot of people. So it's, it's, this isn't something that I think will just serve like two or 3,000 of the most valuable investors out there. But I think this is something that could uh, be a real revenue and income stream for, you know, potentially millions of people. Yeah. So take us back in the day. You said your parents and your family have been in the supply chain business for 35 years. Can you give us just a quick definition of what the supply chain business is? And then tell us what some of the pains were back then that you plan to solve or that you're solving with Kick Further now. Sure. So um, supply chain business, you know, is essentially the, the tagline for their companies is helping companies buy better. So essentially, uh, any company that sells anything, a t-shirt, bag, phone, whatever, uh, it gets produced somewhere, right? Like in a factory. And um, what they would do is they would help p- companies here in the U.S. reduce their costs by finding manufacturers uh, in China and they would have they would institute very strict kind of quality control measures to make sure that what people were ordering here in the US would be exactly what they would get delivered right and there was no uh communication errors which was one of the toughest things back in the day um you know one of the things i noticed is that uh pretty much up and down the entire supply chain everybody needs to finance their inventory and what you see as you get to the major players this is becoming like an increasing need when i used to sell uh to one of our retailers what we would go to these conferences and the retailers would tell all of the people that they were selling uh, that they were buying from they would try and get them to put harsher terms right so it's very common to have net 30 terms where you deliver inventory and then you get paid 30 days later, that's pretty much the retailers putting their financing costs on the people that are selling to them. And because they're the retailers and they're the big dogs in the room, they can throw their weight around and they have the capacity to do that. And what you're seeing is that they're increasingly moving to even more punitive terms like net 60, where you deliver the inventory in January and you don't get paid until March which is something that, you know, retailers have the luxury of doing, but many up and coming entrepreneurs, they have to pay their factory, they have to deliver to their retailer, and then they still have to wait and get paid. And it's like, you know, all of it's it's really squeezing out these uh, up and coming companies. And that's kind of the main problem that we're solving with Kick Further. Yeah, it doesn't sound very efficient to run a business when you're getting paid 36 year or maybe more days in the future after delivering your product. How does Kick Further solve this problem? So essentially what we do is instead of having these businesses have to lay out the cash on day one for their inventory, we tell them, look, we have a community of buyers that are that are interested in buying inventory to support the growth of entrepreneurs. Um, now, what that means is that we'll buy the inventory, we'll pay the factory up front so that they'll produce the inventory and they'll have it shipped to you. And you as the business owner, when you sell that inventory, it's on a consignment contract, which means as you sell it, you pay our community back. So it's extremely flexible for um, the businesses we work with. And essentially, as you don't have to pay anything. It's not like a loan until the inventory sells. And that's the main differentiator between us and pretty much any of the other financing solutions on the market. Yeah. So one of the more popular and well-known financing solutions, and this isn't supply chain financing, but this is, uh, everybody's heard of Kickstarter. How is Kick Further, similarly named, different than Kickstarter? And why should I want to invest in Kick Further instead? Well, so on Kickstarter, you're not actually investing in inventory. Really, if you look at what Kickstarter is, it's essentially a pre-order aggregator, right? So you have an interesting product, an idea, a prototype, and you can go to the Kickstarter community and you can say, hey, guys, I've got this idea and I'd like to get it produced. And people will buy and pay you up front for a future delivery, right? So it's like it's like a pre-order aggregator. Now, with Kick Further, what you're doing is you're buying inventory, but it's being shipped to the business for them to sell it to someone else. So you're not expecting to take delivery of the products that you're buying on Kick Further. You're expecting to get paid back on a consignment basis when that inventory sells. Um, and the other right. interesting it's, it's, thing. It's more than an investment with Kick Further. It's an investment in a company that already has their workflows and processes set up and they're running, they're functioning, they're cash flowing, they're already selling their product. They're, an, they're much more of an established company and you're buying, whenever you invest in one of these companies, you're buying into their inventory to help shorten that time frame, like we were saying earlier, 30 or 60 days. Whereas with Kickstarter, these are just more like ideas. These aren't companies that have been built 
built yet, most if not all the time. Their, their items or products that they want to bring onto the market and they're trying to identify market demand for that. And to do, to do it, they're, these are, they use Kickstarter for their initial customers and try to gauge the marketplace. Exactly. And another key difference is that we don't work with first production runs. So we're not here for the creative ideas. We think that Kickstarter, Indiegogo, they do that extremely well. We're here to help companies that already exist that have sales continue to grow. Um, and it, like a good way of thinking about it is if you're selling to Target, right? And Target says, oh, I'd love to buy a thousand pieces. You can't go to Kickstarter because if you go to Kickstarter, they're going to expect delivery of the thousand pieces that they're purchasing. Um, whereas with Kick Further, you can have our community buy that 1,000 pieces of inventory. It gets shipped to Target. And then when Target pays you, you pay us back. So it's really more of a, a way of helping the growth, the continuing growth of established businesses. Yeah. And what is the funding or credit looking like for um, supply chain businesses right now? Is it still like the, the old standard, I need a small business loan? Or what's the environment like? Well, since 2008, um, Dodd-Frank pretty much killed off the community banks. They, they instituted new rules and community banks, which used to be the number one lenders to small businesses, are dying by, by, by the droves. Um, so you see like there's not very little access to bank credit anymore. And what you've seen come out of those ashes are these, uh, like behemoths like Cabbage or On Deck or Prosper. And generally what they do is it's just um, their number one product is called daily debit or merchant cash advance. And those products are essentially um, they're extremely expensive uh, f- forms of financing, right? They can go from 60 to over 100 percent APR. And that's kind of what we're trying to displace because – uh, by having by shortening the supply chain, we take the banks and those other platform lenders out of the equation, and we just put the businesses directly in contact with the consumers that are, you know, those are the people that are depositing their money in the banks anyway, that the banks are lending out, right? So uh, we kind of improve the efficiency of the entire model by taking the middlemen out of the equation. Yeah, and really just decentralizing and crowdfunding it as well. You know, before I started chatting with you guys to set up this interview and learn what you were doing, I, I didn't really understand how crowdfunding a business like this would work. But now it, it makes a lot of sense. Like we don't need these monolithic types of ivory tower institutions like banks to help coordinate us anymore so that we can do business with each other or extend credit to each other. We needed them. In, in a previous day, you know, even 10, 20, definitely 30 years ago, we had to rely on these institutions to be our centralized points of exchange with each other. But now with the internet and and all the different ways that we can send money around the world, be it online with PayPal or MasterCard and Visa or cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, it really removes our dependency on these older, established, centralized types of institutions, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. And we actually just introduced Bitcoin onto the Kick Further platform. I was about, uh, I was about to ask that. Like it a sounds month ago. Per- yeah, it sounds perfect for what you guys are doing. You know, you you guys have uh, online businesses trying to ship goods and who knows what currencies they are in. So why not use the world's currency, Bitcoin, and then it's going to save a lot on currency exchange as well. And it's much easier, faster and cheaper to get Bitcoin delivered to someone as payment. Why did you guys start using Bitcoin? You know, we, it's just kind of in line exactly what you're saying, right? It's decentralized. It's not tied to any bank, but it's a way of moving currency around that we just, it's technology enabled. Um, it's pretty safe and it's just kind of totally in line with our objectives as a company of creating, you know, a better solution for more people. Yeah. So let's bring it back just a little bit. I know before we started recording, you and I were chatting about how your parents and how your family had had this business and they were entrepreneurs and gave you a lot of good experience and learning opportunity. How has just hanging out with them when you were growing up and seeing how their business worked helped you become the entrepreneur that you are? And just very quickly, because I don't want to beat a dead horse, compare that to what you were learning at the time in school. So what I often say is when I was in college, I took, I was there for about 18 months, three semesters, and then I took a year long sabbatical to work in the family business. Um, I learned more in that first month in terms of practical learning in that first month of working in that business than I did in the previous three semesters of college combined. Um, which, you know, not to denigrate college, but the, the truth is, is that practical learning of management and how to use 
like how to send professional emails, how to be professional on the phone. Those are things that you simply don't pick up in an academic kind of environment, right? Those are things that you pick up in the real world. And to go back to like, my parents have been always very, very entrepreneurial entrepreneurially minded. And one of the things that I remember, I think my father told me when I was younger is he's like, look, the way capitalism works is if anybody's paying you $20 an hour, they're making $25 an hour off of you, right? Like that's the only way it works. Otherwise, they're not going to pay you 20 an hour. You're going to get fired. Um, So he's like, if you want to control your destiny and if you want to own the value of the work that you're doing, you have to become an entrepreneur. You kind of have to start your own ventures and, you know, set out for yourself and earn the fruits of your own labor. Um, so it was like, you know, it was drilled into us from a very young age that, um, you know, selling your time in a salaried position is just a, a, you're making somebody else rich with your time and your life. And so it's something that you're building someone else's dream rather than building your own dream. I mean, you're not building something for yourself. Yeah, you're building a lifestyle for yourself. But when you step back and look at it, you, you're building someone else's business. And there is a freedom, isn't there, that comes along with building your own business? Yeah, absolutely. 100% that there's a lot of freedom in it. And it's also really tough, you know, like when you're, when you've got a job, you can leave your job at, you know, nine to five and you can leave it at the office. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to kind of take it home with you. So it's not, it's not easy. I wouldn't say it's for everyone, but for me, it's always been the path that I knew because of, uh, the way my parents kind of brought me up. You know, I remember like one year they got us this game called the rat race. And it was just talking about essentially the whole game was teaching you how if you don't understand compound interest and the way credit cards work and the way loans work and debt works, then you are destined to always be paying some financier, right? Like a percentage points on your cards or on your mortgage or on your car loan or whatever it was. And by getting out from under that debt and becoming cash flow positive in your own personal life, that's the way that you can kind of create this financial independence, which I think is pretty much everyone's dream is they want to be able to spend their time the way they want to, you know, the way they want to. Was that the Robert Kiyosaki game, board game cash flow? Uh, I think it was called Rat Race. I don't think it was called Cash Flow. Um, I'm not sure. Robert Kiyosaki has a very similar game called Cash Flow. It's it's basically escaping the rat race. And, you know, you have a job and you got all this stuff to pay for. Maybe you have a kid or you have a dental emergency, but you start learning how to invest in bigger and better things that are able to cash flow. And once you meet your cash flowing, uh, w- once your cash flow gets to a certain level that it's more than covering all your bills, then essentially you're, you're financially free. And it's, it's a really good game. I highly recommend it. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon. And, you know, one of the things that I would say is that there's like, um, you know, like one of the reasons I recognize that I've had tremendous advantages because my parents were entrepreneurs and they were able to bring me into this business. So I got to test it out in kind of a low risk uh, scenario where I got to learn about these principles of management and learn about supply chain in a way that, you know, realistically is not available to a lot of other people. And that's one of the driving forces behind Kick Further as well is that not only can you buy the inventory, but you can also sell it. Every single user gets their own personal store. So it's, you, we take a lot of the, um, guesswork out and we reduce the kind of impact of what it means to start your own business. So you can put $20 into inventory on Kick Further and then s- try and sell it. You know, and you can get a little taste of what it's like to be an entrepreneur for a much lower threshold in terms of a financial or knowledge barrier than would be required to just like jump into starting your own company. Right. So you can actually try to sell on a marketplace the inventory that you buy that someone else produces. You don't have to depend on the company who who created that product to find people to sell to. How does that work? Before Sean tells us how you actually sell the inventory that you invested in and get your ROI, I want to remind you that Exodus.io is looking to hire a JavaScript developer from a work-from-home position. If you consider yourself a liberty entrepreneur and want to work in the fast-paced cryptocurrency space, then please send them an email at founders at Exodus.io. And if you're not a JavaScript developer, but no one, feel free to pass along this opportunity to someone else. Again, that's founders at exodus, E-X-O-D-U-S dot I-O. All right, back to it. Right. So you can actually try to sell on a marketplace, the inventory that you buy that someone else produces. You don't have to depend on the company who, 
who created that product to find people to sell to? How, how does that work? So essentially the way it works is that all of the inventory is packed into discrete packs. So let's say I've got, uh, I'm a toothbrush company and I want to sell a thousand toothbrushes through my website. So I can come to kick further and I can say, look, I need to fund these toothbrushes and then they're organized into packs. So each pack might have five toothbrushes in it. I, as a user or a buyer of Kick Further, I can buy a pack of those toothbrushes. Now, I have ownership over those five toothbrushes. And if I choose to sell it through my own Kick Further store, I have five that I own. If I, I can sell up to five toothbrushes and get paid out preferentially ahead of all of the other buyers that are waiting for the store to sell their toothbrushes on their behalf, if that makes sense. So it's kind of an affiliate as well. I mean, it sounds it sounds like there's an affiliate aspect to this of some sort. Yeah, it's a little bit of affiliate. Really what it is is that you can control your own destiny. So if you want to buy toothbrushes and you don't you you are 100% confident that this toothbrush vendor will sell it for you, then you can do that. Or if you're also the type of person that says, you know, I know five people that want toothbrushes and I can move it quickly and I can turn this around in a month and get paid, you know, and you have some like network or whatever, you can leverage that to get better returns more quickly on Kick Further. And are you, do you still need to split some of the commissions with the original company? So the way it works is that you get paid what you're expected. And on top of, on top of the profit you would otherwise earn, you also earn a sales commission um, that the company pays you for originating those sales for them. Oh, all right. Or you can just get the profit that you would have originally earned and let them sell their own product. Exactly. And then you miss out on the commission. Right. If you feel comfortable, tell me what type of user base do you have right now and how long have you guys been live or, or is it live? Yeah, we've been live. We launched our beta January 2015. We have about 10,000 users of which about a quarter of them are active buyers that are purchasing inventory. Um, you know, overwhelmingly, we have most of our community are buyers. They're not here to sell because, again, the companies we work with have established sales channels. So most of our user base are buyers right now, and we're trying to bring in and attract more of these um, people that are interested in the selling part of the supply chain. And really, you know, the long-term vision for Kick Further is to kind of disintermediate the supply chain because there's a lot of places where any individual can add value. And I think that um, if you can add value, you should also be able to draw value out of the supply chain. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I know that you did have a head start on a lot of people since you had two entrepreneurial parents. This is very lucky, I, I must say. Uh, you know, we don't get to pick who our parents are. They, we, we end up with whoever they are, and hopefully they're wise and have experience. And you got that experience. But I'm, that doesn't mean that as an entrepreneur, you're not making mistakes and you're not learning lessons, sometimes possibly hard lessons, even with a guy like you who grew up in this entrepreneurial household. What's one of the lessons that you learned with Kick Further that looking back on it, you're like, oh, man, I, you had like an aha moment. Like, I, I should have known that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Um, definitely, there's this great article written about Richard Branson that talks about start before you're ready. And I had this idea for Kick Further, you know, back in 2000, the end of 2013 was probably when I had the original idea. And, you know, I worked on it in stealth mode for like a year, like, oh, man, I'm going to build this great business plan. And I can't tell anyone because they're going to steal my idea. And that was probably like the, the stupidest thing I've done is not tell anybody about the idea for about a year. Because once you start telling people, that's when you that's when people that are interested in helping you will actually help you. Right. And it's like nobody <laughs> that's busy has the time to steal your idea. You know, it's extremely right. rare. It um, doesn't happen. Yeah. So that was definitely like a huge mistake um, was working on it in stealth mode. I definitely regret that. And the other thing is, um, you know, when we were raising money, so, you know, we, my parents' company and the previous businesses that I've run were all very traditional where, you know, you make profit from day one. Um, so what I learned in this is my first venture backed and, you know, like outside capital company. And what I learned is that you should really be um, very cognizant of the way market forces play. So we raised our first debt, a convertible debt on a relatively low cap. And I think we could have commanded a higher price if I had just gone out there and been a bit more aggressive. But I wanted to give people a good deal or whatever it was. And I was just a little bit unsure of myself in that period. So I think we left a little bit of money on the table there. And um, you know, now it's like kind of coming to maturity. And now is when we're going to have to pay for that. 
What does it mean to you to be an entrepreneur and how have you found that providing more freedom in your own personal life? What does it mean to be an entrepreneur? So for me, being an entrepreneur is someone who is working to achieve, um, wants to control their own destiny, right? So it's like instead of going to a job and working for somebody else, you're working for yourself and you're kind of pursuing your own passion or your own dream of creating a life for yourself, right? And it's uh, to me, a lot of it is about taking control of your life. And I think that that goes directly into the freedom where, you know, you have to be very aware that when, when you're starting something new, it's going to seem like the most important thing. Um, and you're going to want to put all of your time and energy into it, but you have to maintain balance. And part of that balance is being cognizant of the fact that like, yeah, you should still make sure that you're spending time and making time for your friends and your family. And, um, you know, that's kind of what freedom means to me is the ability to choose, like, do I invest these next six hours in working on my business until midnight? Or do I go out with friends and family and eat? And it's like these decisions that you constantly have to make. It's decision making and it ha and it permeates the entire, you know, spectrum of your life where your personal time is now, you know, all your time is now your personal time. And you have to make these decisions constantly about what to prioritize in your life. Yeah, nobody's giving you a schedule anymore when you're an entrepreneur. You're creating your own schedule, and you really see how disciplined you are, or maybe not, with your time and your value. I can see, like, I used to love watching college football, and I, I would watch it every single Saturday. And now there's there's no way I could spend four hours watching a college football game and just sitting there and following every single play. It's like you start to really value your time and see what your time's worth because you know what you're able to build with your time. And man, if I had a focus four hours to sit and build something, I can't imagine what, what could come out of it. You know, I mean, I do, I sit for that long all the time, but just when compared to watching like a sports event or going out to and, and getting drunk on the weekend and losing a you know half or an entire Saturday it just it doesn't make any sense anymore whenever you become an entrepreneur because your time is so precious and ultimately that's all you have is your time and what can you do what can you produce how can you grow and learn and gain in that time that you've got and how can you use it the most wisely I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about entrepreneurship it's it's always comes back to efficiency and ultimately we're trying to use our own time as efficiently as possible because nobody else can use our time and we can't get our time back, right? So it's just, it really is an efficient model for growth. And it's, I'm surprised that like the Mises Institute and, and people like this aren't talking about the entrepreneur nearly, nearly as often as they're talking about the free market. Look, the free market's great, but let's put a face on that. And Sean DeClerc, you are a Liberty entrepreneur. You are the face of the free market. You're doing an awesome job. I love the story about how your family had this supply chain business and how you learned in there from a fairly early age, saw some of the problems in the business. Yours is on the financial side that you really saw some of these problems created a company around it to try to decentralize the power away from the banks and the people that we've historically had to rely on, allow us to communicate and do business with each other and generate wealth all at the same time. I think it's really great, Sean. I appreciate you coming on the show. Do you have any words of advice or any contact information that you'd like to lead out with? Sure. Um, anybody can definitely reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, if you want to I get all of the contact emails. One of the things I would recommend to entrepreneurs is stay on those uh, customer service emails for as long as possible because there's nothing better than direct feedback from your customers. So contact at kickfurther.com. I'll, I'll see it if you want to reach out. Um, and yeah, I would love to love to connect to anyone that have any additional questions. Awesome, Sean. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Ash. Thanks again for listening. Please share this episode with a friend. And until next time, keep building freedom.